And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. Hey guys, today I'm going to be discussing placental and marsupial similarities as well as how those similarities are indeed evidence for creation. To start off, I want to discuss briefly the differences between placental and marsupial mammals. Um, both give birth to live young, but placental mammals spend more time in the womb. They're also nourished by a placenta. Marsupial mammals are born earlier on and they spend more time developing in pouches. So yeah, I'll go ahead and move on to discussing the similarities. Because God created all life and because he's the master engineer, you know, we'd expect him to use certain biological designs more than once in the same way you'd expect a car engineer to use a similar design for two different cars. You know, some of the best examples of um, common design can be found through observing how some placental mammals have very strikingly similar marsupial counterparts. You know, they're not just kind of similar, you know, it's not a trivial similarity, they're very similar. You know, as you can see, I posted some photos for um, comparing placental and marsupial counterparts. Also, I wanted to add on real quick, they, they just recently found another example of a a marsupial placental counterpart, and it was basically a marsupial cat. It was the same size as a cat, and it was just biologically similar. So that's another interesting thing I wanted to add on there. But to conclude, I want to go into a little more detail as to why these similarities are evidence for creation, and not evolution. You know, so the evolutionists would say, you know, this is these these similarities are an example of convergent evolution. However, you know, if evolution were indeed true, we would expect to find a few isolated, trivial examples of conferred convergent evolution, but there are numerous astounding similarities found between unrelated lineages, not just in placental and marsupial similarities, but other similarities you can find throughout nature. Um, evolutionary mechanisms can only do so much, especially in a naturalistic scenario. You see, they aren't sentient, have no real foresight. You know, realistically, there seems to be only two options for rationally and logically explaining this level of similarity, with both being theistic um, or maybe ID intelligent design friendly in nature. One option is that the recurring features are a result of structuralist like laws described by the agnostic intelligent design advocate Michael Denton. So his main argument here is that you know, there are laws which govern how life arises and diversifies. So like as he claimed, you know, since we have vertebrates here, if we found life on other planets, there'd be vertebrates there too, because that's just how life arises in, in the same way because of these laws that govern how life can arise. So in that view, you would expect to see such uh, similar features appearing several different times in separate lineages. So that makes more sense in comparison to the Neo-Darwinian explanation. Of course, the other option, which is the true option, and it's obvious, is that God created different kinds with similar design features and you know like I said you know you can see these similar designs um, not just in marsupial and placental um, counterparts but you know all throughout nature you know it's pretty easy to find these similarities but yeah um, that was my presentation on that I just thought that was an interesting topic it's something I've I've covered um, this topic in another uh, hangout with Standing for Truth briefly but I wanted to elaborate on it a little bit more so hope you enjoyed it guys and thanks for watching god bless for all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on standing for truth please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started